The queer community has criticized the EFF for hosting Lumumba. Let's unpack this for you now. Bring in uh, human rights activist uh, Steve Leteki, who is also Access Chapter 2's executive director. Steve, it's lovely to have you on the program. Thanks so much indeed for making time. I think we'll unpack uh, you know, Patrick Lumumba's I politics around gender and sexuality in a moment. But I wonder as a start, if there is an argument to be made that the prof should have been at that lecture for academic purposes... What do you reckon ought to have been the response of the EFF, given the controversy around his lecture? Well, I mean, uh, look, there's always going to be how we define freedom of expression, association, and so forth. Mm. But no doubt, um, you know, we have to think about whether we invite people who have actually demonstrated, you know, intolerance. We have uh, invited people who demonstrate an extent that contributes to the history of prejudice in the current form where people's rights are violated. EFF, you know, has always shown double standard in many ways. And this would not be a surprise. This would not be a first time. And if it was somebody who was in contravention to their own position on other issues, they would have acted differently. It was surprising that they've acted hypocr hypocritically here in this case. It's so interesting because the EFF in their response is accusing protesters of having some kind of double standards. I mean, I think I heard some of the officials saying yesterday that, you know, we didn't see this uproar when Yuri Museveni himself was being hosted at the union buildings. Does that sound like a deflection to you or does he make a point? Well, look... EFF is also entitled to its own view about how, you know, it stands uh, up or, or how people act against that. But Julius Malema and his own EFF stood on the same day where LGBTI organizations, about 45 organizations, were organizing protests outside parliament and also outside uh, 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 the United Nations offices in Pretoria. And they actually did not support LGBTI persons. They organized their own LGBTI uh, uh, march to Ugandan embassy. And, and, and yet they come and want to speak this way. When they say and accusing LGBTI for why did you not stand, in fact, they must check their facts. It's incorrect to say that they did not organize. Maybe in so much of not a big event the way the, the way today or yesterday uh, took place. Um, you know, and LGBTI organizations have been consistent. What we are surprised to see is their own hypocrisy, and South Africans must watch out for that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because the EFF is often described as a left-leaning organization. Their identity politics are anti-establishment, some people might say, in their nature. And it, it almost feels counterintuitive that they wouldn't necessarily speak out as uh, loudly against, at least at the very least, Patrice Lumumba's comments yeah. around gay people, right? But also, Pan-Africanist thought, according to some people, includes a lot of things, right? Sure. Um, and sure. I, I wonder to what extent Patrice Lumumba should be silenced for an aspect of Pan-Africanist thought that perhaps people don't agree with in a context where there are other aspects of his thinking that, that does resonate. Well, you see, the most important thing, we cannot choose to neglect aspect of intersectionality, even when we speak about Pan-Africanism. Uh, no doubt, even the very same queer people that we talk about, you know, we've got majority who believe in Pan-Africanism mm. and who actually would subscribe, you know, to an aspect of what Patrick stands up for. But what we do not uh, stand up for is when you have and when you grant access, you know, to dangerous and apologetic homophobic person to speak out, you know, into an event which actually harms the very same principles that you stand up for. And, and that, that for me is a big problem. And you know, I think for me, I've challenged even in social media, Patrick Lumumba, how he's stooping so low uh, to actually uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually challenge, you know, the very same ideology of Pan-Africanism. Um, in, in African context, you cannot separate intersectionality, even in the context of reflecting of what happened pre-colonial, what happened during colonial aspect, but also what is happening during post-colonial aspect, where we actually want to define uh, and redefine it where it excludes others. And I think this is the dangerous aspect of 
the African context and the politics of African uh, or contemporary African politics, for yeah. that matter. Yeah. You know, the, the intersectional lens through which we see these things have always been quite fascinating because depending on which community you're a part of, I think people sometimes stop short of um, taking on the full extent of what intersectionality means. What do I mean by that? In, in, in any context, this gendered straight men, for instance, will appreciate intersectionality to a certain point <laughs> until it challenges sure. their own worldview, right? And you can Absolutely. have a different uh, permutation and combination for other different uh, identity politics. And, you know, I, I can see a scenario where people are saying that Patrick Lumumba was no different here, you know. He, I'm sure, also subscribes to intersectionality, but only insofar as it doesn't necessarily push him out of his comfort zone. Look, you know, people are entitled, you know, to their own views. But the moment these views and the moment your own belief is harmful towards others and you act towards that and you actually want to marginalize and oppress others, that's the biggest problem. And I think LGBTI person have never uh, uh, been against anyone who's homophobic. The moment you are homophobic and you display it, in a way that incites harm, in a way that promotes harm towards queer people. This is where queer people stand. Mm. And to say that no doubt you're going to have people who are rejoicing, uh, you know, for, 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 for everything. You are not going to please everyone. But prejudice, discrimination, stigma, and violation of others must never be tolerated in any way. And this is exactly why uh, queer people, LGBTI people are rising to say the very same human rights that you enjoy should be the same human rights that I should enjoy and nowhere do you have space to actually promote harm or, 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 or even uh, act violate, uh, violating others, whether in the speech or even in the action. And I don't think we should actually prom be promoting any kind of intolerance in any way. Prejudice is prejudice and we know it exists and we must never allow it in any way. And what LGBTI community did in Cape Town and with the allies, it's correct. What UCT and also EFF has stood up for was problematic and it incited harm because you are promoting it by virtue of allowing such behavior to continue, even in the spaces. And that's why it, 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 it really constitutes a problematic uh, view. Mm -hmm. EFF stood up for whatever reason, and nobody instigated it, and, and it displayed hypocritic element, and which must never be tolerated in society. When LGBTI marched, other political parties like ANC and others joined. Why couldn't they, and why did they stand alone, and now they act in a, even in a very different manner? That must never be accepted. Yeah. You know, speaking about UCT, uh, a lot of people will argue that universities are spaces where ideas ought to be contested. You know, they are not those places where you drown out the voices of those you disagree with. In fact, you don't mute the likes of Patrick Lumumba. You bring them in and challenge them in that space. What's your response to that thinking? No doubt, uh, universities are a space of ideas, knowledge, facts, and so forth. You always utilize space you know, in, 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 in a way. I'm, I'm one that believes that, you know, you can actually have a debate of a nature where you, you have to have balance of forces. And, um, you know, even those you disagree with must be uh, balanced with those who bring actual facts and actual truth to the matter. And in the sense of whether you are bringing it in an academic manner, you cannot just bring a negative problematic, hypocritic uh, aspect and not balance it with facts, whether at UCT or at political level or even in communities. Balance of forces requires us to bring facts, knowledge, attitude that changes for a better behavior, but that also builds society for cohesion. Those who hold may be actually one to really bring about change of their views to actual reality of everybody else. Plenty to think through. Steve Leteke, always great having you and your take on these issues. I appreciate your time on the AM Report. Steve is a human rights activist, also the executive director of Access Chapter 2. Once again, thanks very much indeed.